Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are getting organized. We're installing an IKEA kitchen pantry. All you need is 15 inches of space or more in your kitchen for an IKEA pantry. I'm gonna share with you my tips for an amazing installation. Let's get started. To keep things easy, I like to have the channel here and the brown side like this and the same on the other side. So I got the channel and the brown side. Then you're gonna get your fasteners, which come in a box, your connectors. So inside your box, let's open it up. This is what you're gonna find. These are your connectors. So what we're gonna start with are eight of these. These are gonna be our connectors and we're just gonna put them in right into that hole there. This is gonna be the top of our cabinet. Screw those in. So the key when working with these is to keep them straight and upright. You do not wanna go in on an angle because otherwise, they're not gonna connect properly. There you go. And we're gonna do same on this side of the cabinet. Okay, so we're doing the exact same thing right here on the bottom. We've got this one here by the channel that's going in. And you're looking for it nice and firm so it doesn't move anymore. These right here are your brackets. These are gonna connect your cabinets to the walls. And what you're looking for is to line it up like this. And we have three screws. The hole is at the back, that's gonna to mount to our rail. And you're gonna install your screws like so. Let's start building the tops of our cabinets now. Again, you're gonna look for that channel, that groove. It's gonna go on the inside over here. For both our top and bottom pieces, I am just gonna be putting dowels on the interior hole, so the inside hole here and two on this side, and then two over here on the other, and the same on the bottom. And now we're just gonna take that and put it on. We're gonna pull out four of these to make our connections now. And what you're looking for is you're gonna put it right here, and it's open side, do you see that? That's open side, you're looking for open side down. So once you get it into the hole, you're just going to turn it to the right until you can't turn it anymore. And the same thing on the other side, you get the open side, lock it, and then we're just gonna repeat that same process on the bottom. To install the back of your cabinet, you're gonna take this back panel here, you're just gonna lift it up and then speed it into that channel, right, like that, and here at the bottom too. For the next step, you're gonna need a Danny. Okay, so this here is the side of our cabinet, and we're just gonna try to do this at the same time. We're lining up the holes. Can you tell me when it's lined up, you're good? Yeah. It's in, okay, perfect. Now we're just gonna mallet it down into place. Looking nice. When it comes to nailing in the backing of your cabinet, there is actually a nailing pattern here. Ikea would like you to start in the bottom corner, close to the corner, just away by a couple inches, a few inches. Now you're gonna move on over here. So two here, and then the next one is at the top. Let's check that out. If you have a finish hammer, they always work better. And then after you've done the three of them, you can just go along and space these out along the entire frame. So to install the feet on this cabinet, because it's a single cabinet, I am gonna install it like this. If you have two cabinets, here's what you can do. You can install your foot like this so that it can share the foot, and that's very common. And when it comes to cutting your rail, what I like to do is measure out my cabinet or multiple the boxes and then I subtract one inch. And what that's gonna do is prevent my rail from overhanging your cabinet. And I like to mark it out. I'm gonna do 14 inches here. And then I'm gonna take it outside and cut it with a grinder. You could also use a hacksaw. Grinder is a lot faster. We're actually dry fitting the cabinet right now, but before we put in our suspension rail, I have to line up the height of this new cabinet with our existing kitchen. So I just made a mark here in pencil on the wall, and that is gonna be where I am gonna be installing my rail. So to mount the rail, you wanna give yourself a half inch space for the rail between your next cabinet, and tail side up 
for the washers that come with your rail. I'm using a cabinet screw for this installation as well. It's just better for holding. So you need a minimum of two screws into studs per cabinet. You do not want to rely on an anchor for something that is really heavy. So it has to be two screws hitting studs or blocking. I have a video on blocking and floating vanities if you guys want to check it out in the description. We're good. So we just lifted the cabinet onto the rail and now it's supported. Once you get your cabinet on your rail, you're just gonna insert this into the hole and do a quarter turn to lock the cabinet. Once it's on the rail and it's locked, you can just check for level and then adjust. We're gonna have to lower the side a little bit and make our adjustments. Now that we have our cabinet installed, we are ready to stabilize and add our shelves. You can look for these screws right there. I've made a mark and this is about the middle point of your cabinet or so. So you push them in, and then you screw them in. Shelf. Lovely, looks good. So these are the hinges that we're using today. The 110s, we're just gonna place them inside the hole, line them up and push down. Close it over. So at this point, I have actually installed some of my shelving and you have to do that first because this hinge is gonna be in the way and you can't install the shelves after the fact. It will make sense in a minute. So you wanna line up the door so that it's flush with the bottom of your cabinet and I'm sort of just using my foot as a little prop. So this one I know will go there, my hinge, and this one I know will go two from the bottom. When you install your hinge, these two screws go on the door side, the hinge side. So let's do this one here first. So what you're gonna do is, I'm just gonna take this part, and push it in. And once you got that pushed in, you're gonna take your screwdriver and screw it in. Once that stops turning, you can move on to the next one. Two from the bottom, I'm gonna push it in. And then I'm gonna give it a whack and screw it in. So all I did there is applied pressure on the back end and that locked it in place. And if we take a look down here, I'm gonna line up the front. That is the guide that you're aiming for when you're trying to install your door. You're gonna carefully just slide it in. And if it takes you a couple times, don't worry about it. Push it, there you go. Now that we have our door installed, there's a bit of a problem, but we can fix it. And that is that it's not shutting properly. So these are adjustable hinges. I'm just gonna turn this to the left right there and that's going to adjust my door so that it sits properly. Press, you go in and press, push it in, press, there you go. Now, if you'd like to build a pantry that has hidden drawers and pull out drawers, you can check out this tutorial right here. We've got some good tips in there for you. I'll see you in the next one.